guys, as you saw, we just installed our uh, balance shaft chain tensioner against the pivot rail uh, for the chain. You can see our one of our balance shafts we had installed in another video. That link lines up where it needs to be. Everything's torqued, obviously. Got one, two, and then three of our guide rails. You can see over here our other link lines up to the mark and these gears are lined up it's hard for me to show you the markings now but the gears uh, the gear sets are lined up where they need to be um, and then down here the link is lined up that's the good thing about this engine um, even though as complicated as it is with it being a timing chain motor the chains as long as you get a legitimate kit the links are marked where they need to go uh, you can see I just have the timing chain on here and staged. We have our mark that's lined up where it needs to go. Links marked up where it needs to go. And then down here, uh, there is a little arrow, and that is on the it is on the corresponding link. It's on the tooth it needs to be on. So again, the thing about this motor, you just have to make sure. Uh, number one is a top dead center. So I don't have any of the uh, timing chain components on. Oh, this goes to the oil pump, by the way. I don't have any of the timing chain guide rails on or the tensioners. That, that's, I'm going to be doing that now. Got everything together. One last final check. Dead center of the link marks. It's supposed to be between 124 and 127. So we're basically right at about 125, give or take. So uh, we're good. Uh, one final walk around.
adjuster uh, torqued, exhaust uh, cam bolt torqued, got our bridge bolts torqued. Everything's where it should be. Top part of our uh, adjuster rail, of the chain guide rail, and there's our adjuster. Uh, same deal up here. And everything is torqued to factory specifications. Again, everything's lined up as it should be. We are still on our mark. That's the uh, balance shaft chain, that's the timing chain, it's the oil pump drive, tensioners are torqued in and released. Um, and that's pretty much the uh, timing chain assembly on one of these motors, guys. So we're going to do, I'm going to rotate the motor over twice. Because this is a four stroke. We're going to make sure we don't have any weird noises or um, contact. There's one. I'm going to rotate it back uh, two more times so everything's on its marks. That little clicky noise you were hearing was just the tensioner. Um, it's, a little, it's a little ratcheting mechanism. A few other things. Uh, just checking the CCV module just for cleanliness, and uh, which it is not. Uh, I noticed the diaphragm. It's also torn. So that's something else that needs to be replaced. Right now I'm taking apart the uh, just the fuel pump to check the plunger board. Uh, I'm checking the actually I'm checking the tappet portion of it. Just gotta finish taking that apart and check the condition of it. Tappet seems okay. Bore seems fine. Camera makes it look weird, but. Really no issues other than it being dirty. Roller seems okay. Just needs cleaned up, put back together. Got a new O-ring for it. Not a problem, but something I noticed. If you look here, the other half of the valve cover, the top half, is not made up flush to the bottom, so you have this little ledge. I gotta clean all this paint off anyway. Um, so when we put our new gasket on there, can't help but feel we're gonna have a little bit of a gap where it's not gonna perfectly seal. Um, and that, it, it's the same on both sides. So, really, uh, the only thing I can think of is just maybe put a little dab of silicone. I may have to check the instructions. I mean, this is an LMS multi-layered deal. Um, I don't know. 
I'll have to check the instructions and see what it says to do. Oh, look at there. Some sealing compound built onto the. See, so guys, that's why I'm glad I bought a genuine kit. Fuel pump bolts onto here, you install your plunger and everything. This is the vacuum pump side of it. Um, you got to make sure the drive gear lines up with the, with the back half of the cam. This is the, the plug for the back side of the uh, camshaft seal on the intake side. Normally you just oil these a little bit, but because we have a split in the cover, um, you know, you, you got to clean the silicone out of out of the out of the groove. Um, so in this particular case, I'm gonna just do very light silicone around this it's not it's not going to hurt anything but it's just going to help seal that little tiny line that we removed Our fuel pump, the new O-ring. I'm going to add a dab of Loctite to these. Just want to get it somewhat started. Still see remnants of the uh, old engine on the crank position sensor. Got to clean that up still. Just removing the studs out of the old head. Fancy stud remover. It's an eight millimeter.
testing the wastegate, making sure it's, it's got absolutely no leaks. So we're good to go. So with the manifold more or less staged with your new gasket, got to get these wedges on the manifold and the stud. There are little grooves cut out. Smack the freaking gasket. And of course, gotta do this side as well. This side's a hair easier. There we go. There you go. And the other one. Yeah, really weird design, guys. But that's it. The wedges have to slip into the slots on the manifold for those studs. And again, it's a little tricky. I've got some extra stuff on here you may or may not normally have on. I'm just trying to save a little bit of time. Because some of these, these hard lines were not leaking when I took everything apart, so why disturb them? And that, in that position, the holes lined up perfectly with the ports. 